Today marks the sixth anniversary of Colgan Air Flight 3407 crash just outside Buffalo, which killed all souls on board and one on the ground. We remember those who lost their lives and we honor their memory as we continue to work for better protections. It is well known that crew fatigue was a primary factor in the loss. AFA, like ALPA, had for years before the crash advocated for science-based regulations that protect against fatigue. Congress and the FAA agreed. Studies were done. Pilots and flight attendants were slated to obtain new rules for rest. The Colgan crash sped up FAA action for pilot rest regulations, but the U.S. is still lagging behind other countries when it comes to equalizing the rest regulations for both flight attendants and pilots. The families of the Colgan air tragedy don't want the rest of the world to forget what happened. They've been in Washington, pushing both Congress and the FAA for new common sense safety regulations. Our union stands with them as we resist any efforts to water down safety standards. We demand improvements that protect both crew and passengers. Although many contracts we've negotiated require better rest, currently the FAA rest minimum for flight attendants can be reduced to eight hours, even after a 14-hour duty day. But let's talk about what those eight hours between arrival and departure actually mean. And all of us know this routine well. We must wait for passengers to deplane, get our luggage, wait for the hotel van, and ride to the hotel. Get checked in and get something to eat, because we've likely not eaten through multiple legs during the day. And then get ready to get some rest. Then in the morning, we must awake in time to make our hotel pickup and travel back to the airport, transit security, brief our crew, and complete safety checks. Then get ready for passengers to board as we begin what could be another 14-hour duty day. In what world does this routine provide for eight hours of rest? In the best scenario, this is only six hours in the hotel room, but in all likelihood, it's much less than that. If a crew is fatigued from nose to tail, safety, security, and customer service can suffer. Flight attendant health can suffer. Over the last 25 years, our union has constantly called for meaningful regulation to address flight attendant fatigue. Our advocacy has resulted in six studies commissioned by Congress, and the results support flight attendants getting eight hours of real rest in between duty hours. Our union is pressing Congress for a change in the existing rules to get flight attendants the opportunity for the rest we need. AFA is calling for a 10-hour rest from arrival to departure to bring this minimum in line with our counterparts in the cockpit and to give flight attendants the opportunity for eight hours of rest. It is past time for all crew members, from nose to tail, to have new rules for adequate rest. And if we are to take fatigue seriously, we need to constantly review what's actually happening on the line. In addition to real opportunity for rest, AFA is calling for implementation of a fatigue risk management plan for flight attendants. Pilots already take part in a plan, and all airlines are familiar with this for our pilots' sake. The plan will vary by airline, but it's crucial that flight attendants learn about recognizing when they're tired, how to stay rested longer, and what to do when they feel fatigued. Today we pause to honor those aboard Colgan Flight 3407. It is our duty to apply the lessons learned from this tragedy and address the safety hazards caused by fatigue in order to maintain the safest aviation system in the world. We owe this to the crew of Colgan 3407, and we owe it to ourselves as aviation's first responders. Wear your AFA pin as a symbol of your commitment to safety and remain ready to act as we fight fatigue through legislative action this year. Thank you and fly safe.